Love Live has quite a wide cast, and most fans are familiar with the cast of Muse, Aqua Wars, as well as the Nijigasaki Girls. However, there's a surprisingly large number of them that people forget about, or simply don't know exist. Today, I'm going to take you on a tour of the most obscure characters in the franchise. Here is a list of the characters I will not be talking about in this video for various reasons. With this in mind, let's get right into it. First, let's talk about the N-Rank girls from School Idol Festival. Since I don't have the time or thoughts to give on all the members, I'll talk about five of my favorites. When I first started the game, the character that stood out most to me was Christina. She's an Italian from Trento, Italy, and has the nickname Chris. Her name is very deliberate, as she is undoubtedly Christian. She wears a nun's outfit in different incarnations, wears a cross around her neck, and even says, God bless us all, during one of her stories. Despite being agnostic, I can't help but find her endearing. Hitomi Shiga, the series certified Jotaro clone, is a disciplinary committee member and has a strong will to... fight enemies. I think it'd be cool to have a rougher girl like her developed upon. Not that that's ever gonna happen, sadly. That first joke wasn't a cheap Jojo reference, by the way. Seriously, her hat even merges with her hair. Leo is a really bizarre character, but a cool concept. Leo has a notably unskilled handle on her speech in her introduction, although this is gone in other stories. According to Leo, she used to live in the forest but was lonely, so she entered society. She also refers to people she likes as family. Rakshara is my second favorite only to Christina. She's a sweet Indian girl who likes curry, mild Japanese curry to be precise. She also has some of the most beautiful N-rank art of any of the girls. Just look at her. She's adorable. I love her. Fumi Nishimura, no joke, is canonically a JoJo fan. I'm not mentioning JoJo this much on purpose, I swear. She makes clear to us that she's a fan of both anime and manga, and in her first artwork, she even holds a manga that depicts Part 2 Joseph, complete with Caesar's headband. I was curious what the kanji on it said, so I asked someone who knows how to translate kanji what it means, which apparently just roughly meant anime magazine. The little colorful spheres could either be a reference to Araki's use of color theory, a lot of Part 2 covers being covered in bright lights, or Haman bubbles. I like Fumi because of this one little nod alone. I'll be discussing the rest of the characters in order from best known to least known, to spice things up. I'm going to start off with Yukiho Kozaka, who honestly isn't really too forgotten, but I feel it's worth talking about because of how much of a role she had in the story. She appears in almost every episode to some degree, even if just for a scene. She's part of the influence for Hanukkah to save her school, and is involved in the arc that would add Ellie to Muse's roster. She also befriends Alyssa, who is the next person on this list. Alyssa, first introduced during Ellie's arc, becomes a character that reoccurs in many episodes like Yukiho. However, she doesn't appear earlier in Season 2 than Episode 9, with the exception of Episode 3. Like Yukiho, she has interactions with Ellie that help flush out and humanize us with this otherwise antagonistic character in the first season. The last of the major kids undoubtedly have to be the Yasuo kids. Since Nico's mom spends a lot of time working away from the home, it's up to Nico to take care of Koko, Kokoro, and Kotaro. These three are the absolute world to Nico, and brings out the best in this otherwise pushy, attention-seeking girl with her love and dedication to her siblings. Although they lack a lot of speaking roles, their family connections make them some of my favorite supporting characters in the series. Principal Minami is a loving mother and the rational principal of Oda no Kizaka. Although she is mostly used for plot points, she does have some interactions with Kotori and the rest of the group that help make the plot a bit more interesting. I personally like the decision to make her Kotori's mother, as that fact connects us with her, rather than her just being another principal. I'm going to make an exception to the rule of unnamed characters, because the next character on this list is the street performer from the original Love Live movie. Hanukkah meets her when she gets separated from the others, and has a bit of a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her. What's more interesting to me, however, is the song she sings. I originally thought that she was singing an original song created for the film, but when I looked into the origins of this song, it actually predates Love Live by roughly 70 years! The song, as time goes by, was originally written in 1931 by Herman Hupfield and was popularized in the 1942 film Casablanca. It became so famous even Frank Sinatra covered it. To hear such an important piece of music history in Love Live of all things is unexpected, but super interesting to learn about. Next up is Suki Watanabe. She lived in Italy for a lot of her life, which is why she served as a tour guide for Aquas while they were there. She is also the student council president of the new joint school in the movie. She didn't exist prior to the movie, so like the street performer, this is her one and only appearance in the anime. She is also Yu's first cousin, and seems to have good chemistry and similarities with her, even stealing her catchphrase once. 
Finishing off the movie exclusive characters is Molly's mother Diz! Technically she's not movie exclusive since she had a brief physical appearance in episode 10 of season 2, but she wasn't fully revealed or given a voice actor until the movie. Her antagonistic role in the movie feels fairly natural, as far as crazy rich moms go. She maintains the controlling attitude that she was alluded to having during the series, which is resolved in a way I find satisfying and in character for both her and her daughter. Definitely one of the highlights of the Over the Rainbow film. Shima and Mito Takami are Chika's siblings, and although they rarely appear, they do have some scenes together, like with the New Year's present scene, or when Shima is seen driving them somewhere. Mito is stricter with Chika, and a tomboy who mostly has humorous interactions with her. Shima, on the other hand, is like a second mother, and from her interactions, shows she knows and cares a lot about Chika. Even if she is not in the story nearly as much as Yukiho was, she's still a great supporting character and a great sister. Now here's where you're probably going to stop recognizing characters as easily. This is where things get interesting. Remember these three girls? They may look like just a few nameless girls, but actually, all three of them are named recurring characters in the anime. Their names are Hidako, Fumiko, and Mika, Japanese puns based on the numbers 1, 2, and 3. The trend continued in Sunshine with carbon copies of them, Yoshimi, Mutsu, and Itsuki. They serve the same purpose, and keep up the pun trend with them parroting 4, 5, and 6. Although we don't know of 7, 8, and 9 being present in Nijigasaki, it's possible the three girls we end up with friends are that series version, but I cannot officially confirm this. Our next character is a recurring character, and outside of Mia's characters on screens, or Merch and Sunshine, the only character to do so. The Akiba Reporter, if I'm correct, first appears in Season 2 during the Halloween episode where she interviews Arise. I believe she makes a few minor appearances in later Mia's episodes, but info on her is scarce, so I'm unable to confirm this within reasonable means. Her sunshine appearances begin in episode 7, where she wishes Aqua's luck briefly before they go to get ready to perform. She reappears in season 2 briefly to announce the lottery in episode 3. She always seems to use her extroverted personality to make the scenes she's in a little more enjoyable. Did you know Love Live had several manga? There's characters that are actually manga exclusive, or only physically appear in the manga, so let's talk about them. The first, weirdly enough, is a male character, Mr. Nishikino. He's the director of Nishikino General Hospital, and expects his daughter Maki to become the future director. This helped to characterize Maki, since this pressure made her have to deal with the expectations put onto her, although he is much more stern in the manga. He actually made an off-screen appearance in the movie, where he drives Maki to the airport. He's also implied to be the one who poses as Santa, and the reason why Maki still believes in Santa, giving his anime counterpart a more loving character. He's also one of the only fathers that speaks, let alone shows his face. The second and last male character on this list is actually one of the most depressing. That's because our next character is Mr. Yazawa, Nico's father. His only appearance is in a single photograph in School Idol Diaries, obscured by bright light. Nico reveals that her dad was actually the one who came up with the Nico Nico Ni, and would say it to cheer her up. She describes in detail how he would sing with her as they walked back from preschool and how happy it made her. Nico refers to him in past tense, because unfortunately, he passed away when she was still a kid. Although this isn't mentioned in the anime, it adds further context to Nico's situation, and gives the Nico Nico Ni a sad, but humanizing backstory. If you've been able to recognize all these characters, then I commend you. However, I seriously doubt you'll recognize this last character, who only ever appeared in the original Love Live manga, despite having major importance to the story. Do you know about the UTX Student Council President? She's a manga-exclusive character, and one who didn't get to be fully flushed out since the manga stopped producing new volumes after the 5th. Also, I don't like her. She doesn't seem to like idols at all, yet supports Arise and uses them as a means to gain new UTX students. She has a main rivalry with Ellie first and foremost, and presents her a challenge in the form of a battle with Arise. She doesn't get the screen time to explain her actions, but she's definitely my least favorite character in the series. What a character to end this list on, isn't it? Hope you learned something new, and I'll see you in the next one.